Chris here with Music Marketing TV. Today we're checking out Phase Plant, the power of the sampler combined with the random modulator. So here I've got this patch. It has a hi-hat sample inside of it. And I've got this baseline background with some strings. And this is going to randomly generate a bunch of interesting, weird movement uh, at a part where I think, you know, I want another element to come in and I want it to have this sort of glitchy randomness to it. And so uh, let's just take a quick listen here. And let's really quick just zoom in a little bit more specifically on the part that we're interested in. This is so this is the hat line. This is the MIDI input right here. And no two times are ever exactly the same. Now I've tamed this back a bit. And originally what I wanted to do was make an entire like drum loop generator using this method, but that wound up being a lot more difficult than I had sort of anticipated. And I came across this along the way. So I wound up tailoring this hat in this direction as a result. So let me show you really quick, just simply how this works. So the, the nuts and bolts of it are pretty straightforward as far as how the, what the sampler does. And then the rest is just sort of post-processing, right? So we've got a sampler here. Uh, the sampler needs an input. I'm gonna go ahead and take this like lovely arpeggiation chord thing. And there's this loop mode, right? So in loop mode, you're able to move the start of where this thing happens and where uh, how long the loop length is. Now, right now it's starting at the beginning every time. That's because of our offset. If I move it forward, it will have to start at the loop since it immediately ends and goes straight to looping. Let me get some higher notes here. If we play really short loop lengths, and let's start where it's a bit louder here. If I have a really short length, we end up getting a pitch instead. There are quite a few plugins that have powers like this uh, using various ways of sort of messing with it. You can do these sort of, uh, these fade out things where we speed up and slow down. There's a crossfade option if you don't want the clicking. So if we go very, very, very close, it's gonna happen real fast. It fades that out. And that's because, right, we have these clicks. If we look, uh, there's actually a gray, you can see right here, this, these gray lines. That's the crossfade. Basically acts like a filter when we're doing stuff that's this short. When we get longer, it's a, a smooth volume change. Uh, so that's the basics of how this works. Now my idea was, hey, I'm gonna take this, I'm going to put a random module on it. I decided to go for smooth, and I wound up settling somewhere a little bit in between because I don't want just totally random in between values. It makes more sense if once it's picked a random value, it hovers around that random value for longer. And we can do this by setting it to a sync. So you can see now it sort of picks one at a rate and then moves around. Uh, or you could have a very, very, very slow value, which I believe is the method I ended up settling on. Uh, so you can go ahead, you can tame this however you want. But what I did was I went ahead and set this for the start. So now this will begin to move. Am I going the right way? It should be moving here. And then I also put one here on the length. So then when we play notes, it'll pick a random starting in length. So this is all on one note. Now, a lot of them are just really, really short because I gave it so much value. If we go ahead and make this a bit longer. Uh, 
you can get some really, really nice things. In fact, let's go ahead. Let me just write in some MIDI for it. I was already on a blink pattern, so that's perfect. Um, let's just have it, you know, continually re-trigger. And we'll put it on uh, over here. And let's see if we can't rein this in a bit. We basically just want less of those. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to open up the length um, and reduce the random. And then away you go. From here, the something that tends to work well when you do something like this is if you add a delay and you also put a, a, a filter after. And you let things sort of fade away, it, it works really well. So let's take a look here at how this other patch works. Now that you kind of see the nuts and bolts of how that one, you know, does what it does. So, and that's the other thing. You could do this with way more than just uh, hats and drums and things. Uh, that's why I wanted to show a chord because the chord ones and tonal examples can wind up just being super cool. So here I've got this hi-hat sample uh, by itself. That's what it sounds like. So obviously not by default what it sounds like. If I were to play it without any effects and just have it go through, we've just got the randomness happening. And this randomness is this modulator. And then I've got a sine wave that's moving this uh, filter around, which will become important later. But this is eventually what I settled on for it. So instead of using the free with a really low value, I settled on sync. Uh, so it matches the tempo a little bit better. So that's without any effects, no effects. And it's using the exact thing. I turned on loop. You can even mess with the different modes. Um, they, they, they can produce some interesting results. Uh, but I just left it on the default mode and then have the start and length moving around. Uh, I did have it attached to some macros because it is really nice that you can sort of move it into more extreme ranges and out of extreme ranges via automation. But it's not an idea I've completely explored uh, musically yet. But it was where I was going next. So... The first thing I did was I added a distortion to bring up the volume of this because it was getting kind of buried. And I also added this filter. So let's lose the filter because this filter came up like way later in the process. So then we've got a compressor. It's a pretty aggressive compression. A delay also got added. I, this was something I also didn't add. And then I have a reverb here at the end, which has been on the whole time. So the first thing is this is nice, but it's just sort of like it's really random and it's also super bright and forward, which doesn't work that great, especially since a lot of the things that this makes is not going to necessarily be, uh, you know, nice with the current tempo that you hear at. It's going to be all these weird uh, extra rhythms. So I wanted it to be something that could sort of move in and out as a texture rather than a discrete rhythm. This is something that if you did want to achieve a discrete rhythm, you could easily do it with an LFO and treat it sort of as a sequencer. Uh, but in this case, uh, what I decided to do was I added this filter and delay. So the delay washes things out. So it lets things sort of bleed together a bit better. And then I have a filter here. And this filter has a very, very high Q value. It's filtering out a lot of the high end and it's moving around subtly. And that's what the LFO is. We have an extremely slow LFO. And its only job is to move it in this range. And this was roughly the range that I, I thought sounded really good when I was moving it by hand. Uh, now we could automate this, uh, but I actually found that this, this does a really good job. Uh, I, I didn't feel the need to have to automate this. Instead, I could have it built in. Yeah, so you get these nice sweeping things. Now this is just the, the standard filter. It would be interesting to uh, have it use the nonlinear filter. You get a whole bunch of different sounds and textures out of that. And instead of the verb, we could try a convolver and we could get some very, very different sounds. But I was mostly interested in sort of this idea of randomly generating textures uh, with given a, a sample, sample content. Uh, and so, yeah, uh, once we put that all in with everything, it sounded really nice.
Now the MIDI, the MIDI was a bit of a tricky one. Uh, I tried really, really thin textures and I found that this tended to work the best. So uh, given there is a, you know, an echo happening, a delay, uh, I found that this reinforcement tended to work really well. If I, if you do every single one, it, it builds up a lot easier. Uh, and the other thing that I started experimenting with and had mixed success with was trying much higher values and much lower values. So maybe we put uh, like a low one and a high one in here. And this is something where sometimes it sounded great, other times it didn't sound so great. And you definitely had to be sparse with it. But there's some, there's a lot of options for the long game for keeping the background sort of always changing, but having something there over just having like a really long sample recorded that I think is uh, very appealing to this. The next thing obviously I was experimenting with was trying to just swap this out with tonal samples. So you can actually, uh, we'll lock the loop and we'll grab this sample here and we could just try out different samples. Yeah, and the the thing with this is when you when you bring in samples that have drastically different content. So for other hats, this would also work great for other hats. Uh, but when you grab, you know, sample content, you're going to want to be uh, changing the length and start and sort of putting things in the range that'll work better for those. So if we were to go over to some hats instead, let's go back up here to the high hats. And I don't know, we'll grab a closed one. Let's find one that's got a, oh, there we go. That one's got sort of a weird thing at the start. So it's just kind of a fun little generative box. What I also love is the undo button can actually undo sample changes, uh, which is just fantastic. Some sense when you drop stuff in, they, they can't handle the external file undo dealio. And so when you do something like that, it's kind of a, you better keep track where that original one was or you're stuck. Uh, but yeah, so there's the idea. That's the patch. A very, very fun idea. If you've never tried it out, I recommend you give it a go. If you have any questions about this, feel free to let me know. Subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos and have a blessed day.